Iraq is a long way from Ohio, but what happens there matters a great deal here. For the risk that the leaders of a rogue state will use nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons against us or our allies is the greatest security threat we face. And it is a threat against which we must and will stand firm. Or we take some ambiguous third route, which gives him yet more opportunities to develop this program of weapons of mass destruction and continue to press for the release of the sanctions and continue to ignore the solemn commitments that he made. Yeah. Well, there, are, there are such a thing as international outlaws. I'm not sure China is one, but I'm quite sure Iran and Iraq are. He will rebuild his arsenal of weapons of mass destruction. And someday, some way, I am certain, he will use that arsenal again as he has 10 times since 1983. Saddam Hussein certainly has chemical and biological weapons. There's no question about that. There is unmistakable evidence that Saddam Hussein is working aggressively to develop nuclear weapons and will likely have nuclear weapons within the next five years. We also should remember we have always underestimated the progress that Saddam Hussein has been able to make in the development of weapons of mass destruction. We know he continues to attempt to gain access to additional capability, including nuclear capability. There is a real debate how far off that is, whether it's a matter of years or whether it's a matter of uh, less than that. And so there's much we don't know. Saddam Hussein, in effect, has thumbed his nose at the world community. And I think that the president is approaching this in the right fashion. Do you believe we could have disarmament without regime change? I doubt it. I can support the president, I can support an action against Saddam Hussein because I think it's in the long-term interests of our uh, national security. Serving on the Intelligence Committee and seeing day after day, week after week, briefings on Saddam's weapons of mass destruction and his plans on using those weapons, he cannot be allowed to have nuclear weapons. It's just that simple. Bill, I support uh, the president's efforts to disarm Saddam Hussein. I think he was right on in his speech tonight. Uh, the lessons we learned following uh, September the 11th uh, were that we can't wait to be attacked again, particularly when it involves weapons of mass destruction. So, regrettably, uh, Saddam has not done the right thing, which is to disarm, and we're left with no alternative but to, uh, but to take action. When I made the decision to remove Saddam Hussein from power, Congress approved it with strong bipartisan support. While it's perfectly leg legitimate to criticize my decision or, or the conduct of the war, it is deeply irresponsible to rewrite the history of how that war began. These critics are fully aware that a bipartisan Senate investigation found no evidence of political pressure to change the intelligence community's judgments related to Iraq's weapons programs. As our troops fight a ruthless enemy determined to destroy our way of life, they deserve to know that their elected leaders who voted to send them to war continue to stand behind them.